Awesome. Uh, good afternoon, folks. I see you all again after yesterday's session as well. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, problem solving. Um, the first thing that we'll be talking, it's a three part series that we're going to be having. Uh, the first part of that is going to be about the mindset that you should be having uh, while you are solving the problems that you have been uh, selected for. Uh, a quick brief about me. Uh, most of you all must have seen me yesterday, but just repeating myself. My name is Karan Trehan. I am one of the engineering managers at Samagra. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all of you. Um, we have a bunch of talented folks uh, who I listened to yesterday ask very good questions to Supreet and also to me and understanding the various projects that we have in C4GD. Um, so welcome all of you. Uh, just giving you all a quick recap as to what has already happened in the program. Uh, 20 plus organizations opened up 104 problem statements for the C4GT 23 program. Uh, post that 2000 plus proposals from 900 plus applications uh, applicants were received. Uh, 104 applicants, which is all of y'all, uh, were selected to work on the project for the next two months. This timeline is kind of important because this is going to uh, shape our mindset towards problem solving. Now, what exactly is problem solving and what is uh, the next step in the program? Uh, problem solving has three different phases. Um, as you folks are already aware that you have been selected for the problems and now you have to go ahead and start solving it. Uh, there are three things that I would recommend that you folks focus on. Um, the first would be the mindset with which you go towards the problem statement. The second is the execution of the problem statement itself. And the third is then visualizing the execution that you have done. We'll go through each of them in detail. First, what is mindset? Uh, mindset is the established set of attitudes held by someone. Um, it is basically the mental uh, work that you will do uh, before you even start working on the problem statement or start coding or start executing uh, the solution. The suggested mindset that I would recommend for you is adaptability, curiosity, and impact first. These are the three things that I would recommend you folks focus on or take into consideration while you start your problem solving journey uh, at, at this program. Uh, we'll go into details of each. Uh, the first one is adaptability. What do I mean by adaptability? As you folks are aware, 20 plus organizations opened up 104 problem statements for the program. Um, what is important here is these 20 organizations selected these problem statements close to a month ago or a month and a half ago, including us at Samakra. Now, a lot can change in the two months or one and a half month that have gone between the problem statements being opened up, you getting selected. And now you're starting to execute on the problem statement. So what we are recommending you is there are, there are some problem statements that could have been built months ago. Tech moves extremely fast. Uh, the problem statements could have changed or could need to be expanded or contracted in scope. There is a possibility that some of the problem statements have been either solved in part in some other issue ticket or need to be solved much deeper or need to be solved much lesser compared to what was the plan two months ago. Uh, so be adaptable, understand the problem statements, adapt to new requirements in the statements, as well as because tech is moving too fast, there could be new scope while working as well. So the the... The summary here is you looked at a problem statement, you applied for it, you came up with a proposal, your proposal got selected, but there could be a possibility that additional scope gets added to your tickets in the one and a half month that has passed already, or could be added while you're working on the problem statement, or there could be things that we need to remove from the problem statement because they are no longer required. So be adaptable, 
adapt to new requirements, adapt to new scope, and be uh, be open to those changes. That would be the first thing that I would recommend you to keep in your mindset. The second thing uh, that I would require or request you folks to do is uh, to focus, to be curious. Now, what I mean by curious is, let's say there is this ticket that I myself have created, right? Uh, it's creating a telemetry dashboard for notifications sent out. And we have a uh, mentor attached to this problem statement. And one of y'all has been selected to work on this problem statement, right? Now, this problem oh, statement oh, is very focused in scope it talks about this is what you want to do this is what you have to do this is what you will do and this is what we'll ask you to do this is what we'll help you to do right but curiosity is what i am recommending you to take into consideration where you read this ticket you see where this is what is supposed to be implemented but also look at other elements in the project and come back to your mentors and say hey i know my scope is limited to only this problem statement but can I expand it to also work on these elements of the system, right? This shows that you are curious. This shows that you want to do more than you are asked to do. And you are looking for more impact or more elements that you can add to uh, the system. The sutras are something we follow in Samagra where we have like certain things that we want to follow for sure. The first one would be to curious and explore. Once given a code base access or you already must be having it because most of it is open source, go ahead, explore the problem, uh, explore the problem statement as well as the code base. Don't limit yourself to the problem statement while you're being curious and exploring. See if you can build the same thing, the dashboard for other things as well. Can you build it other than telemetry? Can you build it for, for, for performance? Can you build it for the amount of uh, um, uh, uh, the amount of storage space that the system is taking. Identify other areas your problems can impact. So as I said, look at other things that you can do along with your problem statements, which would lead to bigger impact. Discuss this first with your mentors. Don't go ahead and start implementing it on your own. Your mentors will be the best people to tell you, hey, this makes sense. Let's focus on building it. Hey, this does not make sense. Let's not do this right now. Let's create it as an issue and look at it at a later stage because they know the system better than most of us. So they'll be able to add more value and tell and guide you as to if whatever you are being curious about is the right way to be curious about. And self-add scope to statements after discussing it with your mentors. Uh, suggest that, hey, this is something that I think can be added. Uh, this can be something that would benefit uh, from the e exploration that I have done of the code base. Now, most of us have been working with the code base since a long time, most of the mentors. Uh, we have kind of a tunnel vision as well. New eyes on the code base, new explorations from you would help us look at other aspects of the problem statement as well. Uh, so would, would be the second thing that I would recommend to you all. The third thing that I would recommend to you all is impact first. All of us here, are kind of driven by impact. We want to build something that is used by a lot of users and can impact the entire population scale. Hence, I think we should focus on impact as well. Let me let me tell you a bit about why we are here, right? So um, as you folks are aware, this is from our website itself, where Code for GovTech is India's first annual coding program to create a community that builds and contributes to global digital public goods. DPGs are at the core of our program and at the core of your selections and your proposals and your intent in joining this program. What is a DPG is it follows certain standards that have been defined. And what is the first standard is relevance to sustainable development goals. So what we need to do is ensure that whatever we are building is leading to sustainable development goals, is leading to impact. And that is what I would ask you all to focus on. Think of impact first when your mentors are explaining, hey, this is the problem statement. This is what we are going to do. Go ahead, ask them what's going to be the impact. Who's going to use this? Where is it going to be used? 
that would increase your confidence in the problem statement and your intent towards solving the problem statements. Ask for clarifications. Ask, hey, can we do this in this way so that it leads to a larger impact? Uh, can we tend to make this a bit differently so that it's also implementable in healthcare, in education, in sanitation, et cetera, et cetera. Can we look at impact first? Believe your mentors uh, when they say that this is something that you're doing could will lead to an impact maybe six months down the line. Not right away. Believe them because they've seen the problem statements. They know the law, bigger picture. Ask them for clarifications on that as well. Try to understand more about the ground level impact that your problem statements would have. Adapt to areas of higher impact. Let's say the problem statement, as I said, built two months ago was focusing on one thing. But right now, techs move, moved too fast. There are other areas that can lead to larger impacts. Can you, can you change the problem statement or can you include one key element that can lead to a larger impact? Uh, for example, going back to the telemetry dashboard, instead of just making it for the notifications, uh, could you build it for how many people actually reacted to the bot and got positively impacted by it? Something like that, higher impact. And documentation also leads to highest impact. How this does it is uh, you are able to document whatever you have done in such a way that other contributors are able to look at it and build on top of the DPGs that you've already created. Uh, this is in line with yesterday's presentation and a few questions about, hey, someone built Sunbird Ed, but now it is being used by six different organizations because it has beautiful documentation. It has beautiful integration guides. If you document your problem statement well and your solutions well, you are leading to a better impact because someone who's looking for a solution like the one you have built, using your beautifully document problem statement, they'll be able to uh, contribute to it quickly and lead to a higher adoption of the product and of the uh, DPG leading to higher impact. Um, again, recapping, have the correct mindset. This is the first step that you need to have even before you start execution. The first thing is be adaptable. Uh, understand that the problem statements could be older. They could have gotten, got under some change, could have gotten impacted by other things developed. Adapt to the, uh, adapt to the problem statement changes. Be curious, look at other elements in your problem statement or in your entire code base and figure out if you can build something extra on top of your problem statements and focus on impact first. Whatever problem statements you are working on, ask for impact, clarify your impact, and then focus all your efforts and energies on ensuring that camp, that impact is delivered. Most important thing, documentation leads to the most amount of impact, which sometimes most of us don't really look at. Uh, but if you document your code well, if you document your uh, process well, uh, other folks will be easily able to contribute to your DPGs and take it to the next level. Uh, that's it, folks. This was my presentation on the correct mindset towards problem solving. Um, I'll stop sharing now. Uh, thank you very much, Karan. Uh, it was such a wonderful session. It was really interesting. I myself resonate with the uh, problem solving aspect of it, uh, especially the mindset and curiosity. Uh, now, guys, the floor is open for the questions. If you have any questions, you can ask or you can type in the chat box. Hi, Uh, I was having a question. Yes, sir. Uh, so I wanted to ask that uh, whatever we are building, like in any problem statement, uh, everything is going to be uh, like nothing is uh, closed. Like everything is open source. That we are kind of because if the projects are closed, then should we like public our documentations for others to build upon it? I think this is something that your mentors can uh, can guide you. But my thought process here would be, even if there are bigger companies like uh, Facebook, Netflix, others who have closed source code bases, they still open source the process that they take to problem solve. They still open source the way that they have, they have looked at a problem statement, the approaches that they have taken, and what did they finally decide to do 
uh, to solve that problem statement. So if you're not talking about the actual code that can get open sourced, you can at least talk about the process that you took, the approaches that you decided on, etc., etc. That would be really helpful to you as well as other people who are going to be trying to solve the same problem at a later stage. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? You can raise your hand as well. Just to reiterate, folks, uh, the questions could be from uh, yesterday's session of Karan, of uh, from you know whatever he has talked about today also, and you can in general have certain doubts, uh, you know, pending from uh, from yesterday. You can ask that as well. The floor is open, uh, you know, for you to ask, uh, you know, questions. In whatever uh, you know form and uh, you know in in, in any in, in any direction related to C four T T. I said uh, I have a question. Like whenever we start contribute towards open source, so they have a very large code base. Like uh, we particularly work on short code base. Like whenever we build anything, like not uh, so much large that we uh, see right now. So like uh, we know that the public file will have that, SRC file will have that. But instead of that, I uh, feel problem whenever I start contributing towards the large code base. Like how to simplify the large code base and how to know that what code is uh, working like our etc. I think uh, uh, that's a great question. This is something that I myself have uh, have struggled with. Uh, the easiest way to 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 get understanding of any code base, according to me, is to deploy it locally, run it locally, and put a lot of debug points. Um, let's say you are in a flow, you see some text, find it in the code base where that text is and attach a debugger point to it and see how the code is flowing through the debugger points. Uh, that is essentially how I try to look at us isolated pieces of components if I don't have a mentor. Uh, but the advantage of having the C4JT mentorship program is whenever you hit a problem statement where you're not really sure, hey, what code base is this using or what file is this using, your mentors are just a message away. You tag them, you ask them, hey, I don't know where to start out from most probably the mentors will tell you this is the file, this is the code base that you have to start off with and then start branching out from there. Uh, so use your mentors as well as you can, but also on your own, try to deploy the system locally. Put up a lot of debugger points or a lot of logs to see how the code is flowing and reach where your element is. Um, that's essentially what I try to do. Thank you. 